I know that I just really don't like the one-man show things. I don't like to lead worship, do announcements, talk about things, and also preach. So does anybody want to come up and preach? I'm giving my notes. You can't stand up. I know, I can preach from the Well, it's good, and it's always good to be here. It's always good to be a part of this. And, and the truth is, God called me to do whatever he needs me to do to build his kingdom. Uh, it was exciting for me today. I hope you'll let her know how much you appreciate her, but Barb really helped me out today, and uh, it was really nice to have her step up and say, oh, I'll sleep with you. I can tell you, I really wanted it on camera because my girls will not believe that their mom sang in church. So it's on camera, so we can actually share that and prove it. All right. So at this time, let me have Debbie join me here and share the scripture with us. So he doesn't know I'm going to do this, but, you know, in your prayer, um, there's one thing I think all of us would like to add is, thank you, Father God, for a pastor and wife who love you, whose desire is to serve you above all things, and for bringing them here to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Pastor, that's unusual for me to do. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Matthew 10, 1 through 10, and 37 to 42, if you would like to follow along. Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. Now the names of the 12 apostles are these. The first, Simon, who is called Peter, and, his, and Andrew, his brother, and James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon, the zealot, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out of, after instructing them, do not go in the way of the Gentiles, and do not enter any city of the Samaritans, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. Freely you received, freely give. Do not acquire gold or silver or copper for your money belts, or a bag for your journey, or even two coats, or sandals, or a staff, for the worker is worthy of his support. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take this cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who has found his life will lose it, and he who has lost his life for his sake will find it. He who receives you receives me, and he who receives me receives him who sent me his God. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward, and he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever in the name of a disciple gives to one of these little ones even a cup of cold water to drink, truly I say to you, he shall not lose his reward. Mm -hmm. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Praise God. Thank you, Debbie. Uh, you know, today is just one of those days where we do everything to make everybody feel a little bit out of, out of their comfort zone. Um, I don't know if you know this, but, you know, when you when you hear me talk about uh, uh, having people come up and, and read scripture and, and be a part of that, you notice that you kind of get into a little bit of a, of a rut there, right? You have three, maybe four or five people that read all the time. But when you have other people read, they have to move out of where they're used to. And Debbie told me when she said, I'll, I'll read it, but I might just go to Mush while I'm up there. Right? Barb said, I'll never lead singing in a church. You got to witness that she has and can. 
So there are things I, I said that I don't have any desire to be a preacher. Now if somebody told me, hey, I don't want you to be a preacher, I want you to do something else, I can't imagine doing anything else. I love being in this pulpit, sharing God's word with you. So like things are different and, and Rick is in the back. He came to me just a week or two ago and said, you ever need anybody to fill in back here? Just let me know. So I think it was Thursday. You know, I gave him a lot of notice. Friday I afternoon. Was Friday afternoon uh, on the way home from work. There you go. Friday <laughs> afternoon on the way home from work. So I gave him even more notice than I was giving myself credit for. See? Um, Friday afternoon. Hey, Rick, were you serious? Yeah. Good, because Barbara and I need to lead worship and we need somebody to run the sound. Right? So there's lots of people standing up, stepping up, and doing more, and that's awesome. And we're talking today about be, do, go. I can't wait to get into that. So let me just get started here. Today, we're going to be wrapping up our, our messages on the power tools. Okay? So uh, keep that in mind. I'm, I'm sure there's more that we can talk about in the way of power tools. I'm sure there's more tools. I'm sure there's more discussions. I'm sure that I'll probably preach on it again someday. But I just feel like at some point we have to stop and allow whatever it is God's leading us to do next to start happening. And, and that's kind of where I am. I've been feeling like God's been directing me to look at how and why we serve. How and why we serve. So I'm planning. Might not even start next week. I'm not sure because I'm really just trying to get what God wants. But in the next couple, three weeks, I'm planning to talk to you a couple times, maybe three times, about what it means to serve. But to serve like Jesus served. See, we, I'll get into that. We have, we have some options there and how we serve, right? I'm sure I'll go there. I'm not going to go there now. You know, Thanksgiving's coming, right? We're going to have a Thanksgiving dinner. We're doing some things in the community. Probably you guys already have your plans for what you're doing, where you're going, who's going to be with you. Um, Thanksgiving is coming. I probably will. I plan, unless God changes, I plan to take a little bit of a time and talk about giving thanks. So that's coming up. Um, right after Thanksgiving, I don't know if you know this, but Advent starts right after Thanksgiving. And Advent is the beginning of the church year. Advent, the beginning of the church year. Now we look at that and we think, well, this is the end of the year, right? Coming in December. But the church, if you don't know this already, the church actually starts. The church year starts with Advent. Why? Because Advent is it is the expectation of new. It is when the Christ child <clears throat> comes into our life. It's there's there's good to find in Advent and it's all in brand new. So it's all in a new beginning. That's the new year. So we're going to be looking at some of those things. Okay, now I know I just threw a bunch of things and I don't want to get into the wrong message, so I've already started to get into the wrong message, so let's just go back to power tools. Remember that we started this series by talking about the power we find in prayer. I'm not sure about everyone, but I know I feel more connected to prayer since that message. Personally, I feel more connected to prayer because or through or since that message. And I've had a few of you say to me that you feel the same way. We want to become a house of prayer. We want this place to be a house of prayer. I believe this is another one of those 80s songs that I connect to so well. But I believe that if we were to become a house of prayer, we would be a powerhouse. This place would be powerful. If we truly begin to pray for each other, 
and for our community, our country, and our world, we will see God's power flowing all around us. What's better than watching God change things? I can answer that for you. The answer is watching God change things by using you and me. Right? <coughs> right. It is. I heard an evangelist talk about what's better than going to heaven once. And his message has stuck with me ever since. It's it's one of those messages that I got and it's, it's in me and I just, I, I hold on to it all the time. Maybe in the next couple weeks, maybe I'll preach a little bit about what's better than going to heaven. So if we want God's power to flow through us, then we have to begin to pray throughout the week for each other and for His power to change things. Then, after we got through the prayer message, like I said, that one really, really hit me. Then we talked about the power tool of Scripture. This tool is the tool that gives us history. It's his story of redemption and grace. This is a story that shows us where we came from and why we need salvation. The story is the gift of life. It even goes a step further because as we read this story, we find truth. And truth with a capital T sets us free. Amen. Amen. Then we know where we're going. And the scriptures give us direction as we walk through this life toward eternity. Let me stop there for just a second. I'm going to come back to my notes in a minute. But let me just say this to you. It's okay for you to agree with the pastor. It's okay for you to say, Amen, praise the Lord, preach it. It's okay for you to stand up and say, Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want you to know something that you might not know, you may have never heard. But if you do that, it encourages the guy in the pulpit. Amen. Amen. When you sit there like you are dead, <laughs> like you are dying, <laughs> like you are just not engaged. <laughs> We go through this and we're like, I'm not so sure I really even preached a message. Bring it on. Okay? Bring it on. Thank yes. you. <laughs> talk to me, guys. I love it when you talk to me. <clears throat> because, because I like people. In case you don't know this, my wife, when we're going somewhere and we're on our way somewhere and have to stop at someone's house or like Rich and Death, they'll say, listen, you don't have to get out of the car. We'll just bring it to the window of the car. You know why? Because this guy, when he gets out of the car, then we have a conversation. The conversation doesn't happen for a minute. Conversations are conversations, right? We talk to each other. Talk to me. I'm encouraged when you agree. And if you don't agree, well, talk to me after. Because it can be pretty bad if you start talking to me here about, whoa, preacher, sure you're wrong. <laughs> okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, let's get back to it. <clears throat> Last week, I talked to you about the power tool that we received because we received the first two power tools of prayer and word. It was love. And we said that love is the tool that makes the difference, right? Amen. Love is the tool that makes the difference. Thank Amen. you. Amen. <laughs> love is a tool that calls people to repentance. Love is a tool that changes things. It changes people and it changes things. So, we have to love if we're going to follow Christ. Because Christ comes from God and God is love. Thank you. God is love. Amen. I do want to make one last point, though, if you'll let me. So I'm going back. This is kind of a go back to last week. God is love. 
But that doesn't mean God isn't vengeance. Hear that. Praise God. God loves all, all of his creation. And he wants all of his creation to be with him. But, but, when his creation turns his or her back on God, they receive their due reward. Which means they get what they've asked for, right? They will not be in God's presence for eternity because they chose to not walk with God. They've asked, God, leave me alone. To me, that's worse than any picture of hell we could ever paint. God is love, and the gift of eternity with Him is eternal love, which is also eternal joy and eternal peace. Eternity without God is eternity without those things. <clears throat> without going deep today, this means those who do not follow God in all of His ways do not spend eternity with Him. In other words, it's not a take what you want and I'll forget about the rest kind of lifestyle that God wants us to live. He wants all of us. And He requires that we live our life for Him. Not just when it's convenient. Ouch. But okay. Somebody say amen? Amen. <laughs> okay. This week, our power tool looks different than the other weeks. Now, I know I said that last week, but this week is even more different because this week, we're looking at what happens because of the tool that we're receiving. The power tool this week is the ultimate power source. It is the ultimate power source. He is the Holy Spirit. And He is the giver of of all power tools. Amen. He is the all-powerful one. As we communicate with Him, as we read <coughs> Scripture, we gain understanding of Him. As we love, we see Him work. So, He is the ultimate power tool. I've titled this week's message, Be, Do, Go. Let me explain. Be. We are to be what we are created to be. This means that we are to exist as we were created to exist. Let me try one more time. Genesis 1, 26 through like 30-ish says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. And let them rule over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the sky, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it. And rule over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the sky, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Then God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the surface of the earth, and every tree which has fruit yielding seed. It shall be food for you. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the sky, and to everything that moves on the earth, which has life. I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. Amen. So, for us to be is for us to rule over the things of the earth. We were made to govern the world. We were made to nurture our world. We were made to take care of our world. That's what you've heard me say a few times. 
This is us, human beings, as part of the creation. And this is why I believe we and all of creation are being redeemed through Jesus' death and resurrection. This happens through our relationship with the Holy Spirit. So, He's the power tool that makes a difference in us, right? And through us. To be is to take responsibility for God's creation. To be is to take responsibility for God's creation. That's why I recycle. I don't know how else to say that. I believe we do what we can to help our environment. Our environment is part of creation, which is being redeemed through the blood of Christ, just like us. If it means we recycle some plastic, then let's recycle. If it means we change our fuel, then let's change our fuel. If it means we care for our forests and the animals that live in them, then let's do it. I'm not sure all of these things do as much as our media likes to tell us. Okay? Just take it for what it is. I found that if I watch NBC and Fox, I get two mixed ideas that neither one of them are probably right. Just giving you that. But at the same time, there's some things that are obvious that we can do to make a difference in our creation. I think that's what the scripture passage that I just read says. So let's be as God created us to be. And let's not shun our responsibility to care for all of God's creation. Then there's this word do. Do is more than be. <clears throat> be is to be a part of what is happening around us because we were created with it and then to do is to be active. You get that? To do. You can't do while you're sitting still. This afternoon, when I go over and sit on my couch and turn on a football game or something else, I will not be doing anything. I promise. That's the point when my... my I'll share that someday. That's the point when my brain goes into nothing box. I like the nothing box. Amen. That's when I get to enjoy it. Okay? So, do is to be more than be. Do is to be active. This means that we are making a difference. It means that we are to be involved and aware. It means that we are to be moving in a way that is changing things. To do something is to do something. That's pretty profound. Am I right? Yes. To do something is to do something. Guys, I don't think women have a nothing box. But guys, that means get out of the nothing box. Okay? You have my permission to get there every once in a while. Though. It's a good thing. All right. Matthew 14, 13 through 20 says this. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place. And it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have, we have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. They bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied, and the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. I want to show you something from this passage of Scripture. 
I think that most of you are familiar with this passage. It's not a new passage. We talked about the feeding of the 5,000. I'm pretty sure most of you have heard that story. You know that. I think it's familiar. And sometimes when something's familiar, it's not a good thing. It can sometimes be actually the worst thing that can happen. Why? Because we often don't read what we think we know. Right? We don't read what we think we know. We've already got that figured out. We don't need to read it. So we kind of skim over it and just get it. You all understand that this, this happens even though we don't realize it's happening. Check out this sentence and see if you know what I mean. When I did this, Barb always reads through my sermon and she puts this, this PowerPoint together. She read that and she was like, I don't understand. Why do you want that up there? Do you catch it? Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied and the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. That's what it says, right? Hmm. See, we all read without really looking at the individual letters. That's why us being familiar with the passage of Scripture isn't always good. Here's what I mean. We are talking about the word do. Look at Matthew 14, 13 through 20 again. I don't think it's going to be up there. Look at it in your own Bible. It says this. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and, the, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Right? Starting in verse 16. Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You. 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 Give them something to eat. Do. You give them something to eat. Well, we have only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. You bring them here to me. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the people. Who fed the 5,000 people? The disciples. Jesus made it happen. The disciples did the work. Yes. Then verse 20, they all ate and they were satisfied and the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. See what I mean about do? Do you read what I'm saying in this passage? Jesus told them to be as they were created to be. And then he gave them something to do. They went and collected the five loaves and the two fish. They distributed the food to the people. They picked up the extra food that was left over. In other words, the disciples who were following Jesus. Are you following Jesus? If so, you're doing. Because they were the ones that did. They became the hands and feet of God while he was still walking with them. He was with them in body. And they had to go and do. That's what I mean by do. Why can't, why can't we just expect God to work through us? We have to be willing. You and I, we have to be willing to do what he asks us to do so that he can work through us. He won't force us to do anything. He won't 
use us like a puppet. But he will use you if you're willing to be and you're willing to do. That brings me to the point no one ever wants to talk about. What's the word? Go. Go. I know you think that I'm going to tell you that you need to go on a mission trip somewhere, right? Or maybe you think that I'm going to tell you that you need to move to some remote place so you can teach somebody about the Bible. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you think that I'm going to say to you that you need to go to someone that you don't like and share God's truth. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I'm not going to tell you any of those things. Because it's not for me to say that to you. But if God says that to you, I suggest you go. Okay? Go. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. The classic go scripture, right? It says this, that Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Amen. Yes. Here's what we really don't want to hear. Here's what we kind of want to ignore, I think is the right way of saying that. It's the hard part of following Christ. You see, this is the great commandment. This is the command to go and do something. This passage actually kind of sums up the whole idea of be, do, go. Because it fulfills all three of these words. All authority is given to Jesus and he calls his followers to be as he created them to be in heaven and on earth. Amen. He then tells them to go to all of creation and he tells them to do when he says make disciples. Amen. Go and do, which means make, right? As you were created to be. Go and do as you were created to be. And Jesus will be with you yes. to the very end really not scary words at all. Really not even hard words to hear. Because they're words of invitation. They're words that bring life to all of us. As we listen, we hear God calling us to rest in Him. And allow Him to work in our hearts and through our hands and feet. As we follow Him, he fills us with his Holy Spirit who gives us strength. He gives us direction. And he gives us help. And we watch him build his kingdom through us as we apply the power tools he gives us. We're all invited to share the tools and the gifts God gives us. And we're all invited to share at his table as we try to follow him. We're going to join together this morning to share in the Eucharist, also known as the Communion or the Lord's Supper. I'm going to bless the elements. And then I'm going to ask you if you will join me. Actually, I'm going to ask those who are helping me first to join me in the front. And then I'm going to ask you to actually form two lines. This is going to be a little different for you. But I'm going to ask you to come down the middle aisle. And Bill and Kim are going to be on this side with the elements in the cups. And Barb and I are going to be on this side with the elements for intention if you want to take the bread and dip it in the cup. What I ask is that if you're taking the communion from Barb and I in intention, come on this side. And if you're coming in for the cups, come on this side. Come up, take of the Eucharist, and then go out to the outside. You can stop and pray if you'd like to, but please go all the way to the end of the altar so that people don't trip over you. And then go out through the back, out through the sides, to the back, and back to your chairs. Would you do that for me?